If rumours are to be believed, Doctor Who's first ever episode could be excluded from the upcoming iPlayer deal and never distributed by the BBC ever again. So this is a highly unusual, highly complex situation that has unfolded sort of over the last few days, over the weekend, which has attracted a lot of attention from a lot of Doctor Who fans. It's something that's very much started off small and has just kind of completely blown up and a lot of people have begun to take it very, very seriously, um, you know, and it remains to be seen whether or not anything will come of this, basically, or whether it's just like a guy kind of... Um, shouting into the clouds and stuff pretty much but uh yeah without further ado uh, well, let's break this down because you know you might have heard about this you might be wondering what, what it's all about you might have not heard a thing and i've seen this video and be thinking my god what's going on so let's have a look at where this started and what the implications in the situation could be so let's go back in time to doctor who's inception doctor who's first ever serial an earthly child or whatever you want to call it, 100,000 BC or whatever it is, uh, the Tribe of Gum. It's got so many different names because, you know, of course, like, like everything, you know, about Doctor Who's Inception, there wasn't really a plan. They never planned for it to be the, the success that it became. And so things, you know, weren't kind of set in stone. Uh, you know, they didn't have titles, the stories, they had individual titles for each of the installments, you know, of like a four-parter, for instance. So, An Unearthly Child is the first one, and etc. But in terms of the overall stories, you know, in terms of the overall story titles, there wasn't ever any such thing until like the 70s. And it's a similar sort of thing in terms of, you know, the stories and who created the stories as well, who created the characters of Doctor Who, you know, who created the character of the Doctor, who created the TARDIS and the idea of the TARDIS, who created the word TARDIS, the acronym TARDIS, you know, where did that come from, uh, who created the characters, you know, Susan, Ian and Barbara etc you know and this is the thing with the Daleks as well like Terry Nation obviously in the second Doctor Who story the Daleks he wrote that story and he wrote like the little description of what a Dalek is but in terms of the actual visual look of the Dalek I think a lot of people would agree that Ray Kusick the designer for that story was really influential and played a massive role in terms of actually designing the look of a Dalek which is what we know a Dalek to be today you know without him that wouldn't have happened and so that, that's just one very very clear example of where you know at least two people were kind of coming to that thing you know, in this case the Dalek and the idea of the Daleks and you know who is the person that was responsible for that and for the success of, of the Daleks at the time Terry Nation you know was, was deemed to be that person and Ray the designer you know I think for many years didn't get the royalties that he really deserved from that but yes you know in truth you know put simply these things are not clear cut they are not simple and that is even more the case with the first Doctor Who story and an earthly child or whatever you want to call it, um, that story, you know, being the first Doctor Who story, introducing these characters, like I say, you know, the idea of the TARDIS, the word TARDIS, the, the character of, of the Doctor, all of these things, you know, they weren't just designed, created by one person. It was very much a committee thing. You know, so many people were involved in the inception of Doctor Who. You know, who created Doctor Who? Answer the question. Well, you can't do because there are just so many people. You know, there was Sidney Newman, the, the BBC head of drama. Um, I think it was like Donald Wilson as well, a guy at the BBC. Then in terms of like you know, producers, you had Verity Lambert, obviously, you had the director of the story, Oris Hussein. You had the writers of, of Doctor Who as well in terms of the, the first serials. There was another serial that was planned before An Earthly Child. I think there was See You Ever, who was behind that he's another name that kind of crops up you know lots of other names and another name Anthony Coburn of course was the guy that well ended up writing and an earthly child the the first Doctor Who story sort of de facto really it wasn't planned to be that way like I say I think Planet of Giants basically was was meant to be the first Doctor Who story and for whatever reason things got shuffled around and this story went into production first instead you know for whatever reason I think it was like practical reasons basically this story you know that is basically about the Stone Age and cavemen and stuff Obviously, the first instalment is quite different to the rest of it. I mean, if you, if you don't know, if you haven't watched it, the first instalment is, you know, set on present-day Earth. Introduces, you know, the character of, of the Doctor and Susan, his granddaughter, who is kind of... Well, they're both kind of hiding out on present-day Earth. Well, then present-day, like, 60s London. You know, she's, like, at a school, and he's in the junkyard with his TARDIS and stuff. Uh, the, the school teachers come in, obviously, and then Barbara, and they all get catapulted back to the Stone Age, and the, the remaining three instalments of the story are all about their, their adventures and exploits in that era. So that is what we're dealing with here, that first story, which, as I say, is very much a committee thing. You cannot pinpoint one person, or even two, or even three people, you know, who are responsible 
for the birth of Doctor Who. It's always something that, that comes up over the years, you know, anniversaries to, you know, who was the creator of Doctor Who? Who was it? Well, there are all of these people, you know, it, it was a shared responsibility, basically. It was, a, it was a shared thing. Now, Anthony Coburn, the writer of An Unearthly Child, who you may or may not have heard of. I mean, he's not a writer who ever came back to Doctor Who. It was just a you know, one-hit wonder or not <laughs> type thing um, with, with that first story. You know, he, he never ever came back. Yes, yeah, so he's kind of like a, a, a bit of a footnote, really, in terms of Doctor Who history and in terms of that story as, as well. Yes, he did write it. Yes, he played an influential role. But actually, you know, there are rewrites and things. And David Whittaker is another name to mention. The, the script editor, the original script editor on Doctor Who, he was a, a really, you know, big player in all of this as well. You know, the, the story was, or the first installment of the story at least, was recorded twice. There was the the pilot version, and then after that some changes were made, some tweaks were made, and for the, the finished recording, which went out on TV again. So, you know, all these people had input, you know, Sidney Newman, Fosie Lambert, the, the director of Warris, those people and more were responsible, you know, for what Doctor Who was, for, for setting the template there, and for what it, what it became afterwards as well. Anthony Coburn was the scriptwriter, as I say, of that original story, but it, it very much was not just him. Um, you know, he did not invent the premise of, of the show, certainly, that that came before him, like I say, because this story wasn't even meant to be the first one in, in production. It's meant to be a different story. So, so all the characters and the ideas of, of you know, the Doctor, the Companions, the TARDIS, they are all sort of there, still in flux, still developing. You know, things like the Time Lords didn't even come onto the scene until like, the War Games, the end of the Second Doctor's era. The word Gallifrey didn't come into the mix until the Third Doctor's era, and etc, etc. So, so all these things, you know, were still developing but both at the time and, you know, in, in the years since as well. But uh, yeah, that, that is the idea behind this. You know, there was this guy, Anthony Coburn, who, who died, I think, in, in the 70s. He's long since gone, God bless him. Uh, his son now is the one who has kicked up this storm. So his son is on Twitter. I will not sort of uh, go into too much detail, you know, about this individual, but the information is all there for you to see if you want it. And here's the one that has, like I say, kicked this up. Um, brought th this whole thing to the attention of Doctor Who fans, made these claims about what he's done, what he's going to do, uh, because basically he has inherited all of the copyrights, intellectual property, etc., from his father. He seems to be in charge of his estate and everything, and yes, he's not too happy about some things. So Coburn Jr. has basically made lots of claims. You know, the gist of it is that his father was more responsible for the genesis of Doctor Who than he actually was, or at least than we actually know him to be. So in terms of coming up with things like the word TARDIS, he claims that Anthony Coburn, his father, came up with that word. You know, he claims that there were all these things, all this input he had into that first episode, and he was never properly remunerated for it. He never probably got the credit, the money, etc. that he deserved, and especially with him dying to, like, I think, 10 years or so later as well. He's out, you know, to basically get revenge on the BBC for, for what he perceives as this this unfair treatment of his father. And it's all a really horrible, murky situation. This chap, you know, with the best one in the world, he uh, has some opinions and values and stuff that the character of the Doctor themselves would not agree with, let's just put it that way, and he's reportedly not in the best mental state as well. He's tried to do things like this in the past, so apparently 10 years ago in 2013, for the 50th anniversary, he tried to make out, you know, th this case that his father was responsible for the whole concept of the TARDIS, and in that case, you know, basically, uh, there wasn't a case, it all fell apart, didn't come to anything. But yet, yeah, 10 years on for Doctor Who's next significant anniversary, he has basically claimed that he has revoked the rights for the BBC to distribute that very first Doctor Who story, An Unearthly Child, or as he refers to it, The Tribe of Gum. Like I say, it's got so many different names. But yeah, that is the gist of this. He's made that claim. Um, since he's made that claim, and he's made it like repeatedly again and again and again on his personal Twitter, uh, the official Doctor Who YouTube channel has in fact unlisted or, or deleted all of its clips from an earthly child or child of gun whatever um so you know again you know, take all this with, with a pinch of salt uh it could just be like a temporary thing it could just be them sort of covering their own backs while they, they put their own case together you know perhaps it's just a temporary measure for them you know to, to kind of you know ride this out and then they'll go out again afterwards that they'll be put public again 
Um, it's all a bit of a strange thing. I mean, we should say as well, uh, at the time of recording, Unearthed Child is still available to stream on BritBox, which is where all of Classic Who is currently at the moment. Whether this, well, number one, whether this is actually a real case that, that will go anywhere is something that remains to be seen. Whether it will impinge on the whole iPlayer thing as, as well. You know, this whole uh, thing recently announced that all of Classic Who, or Doc Who in, in general, is going to join iPlayer from the 1st of November. You know, could it be all of Doctor Who apart from its very first serial, An Earthly Child, and also, of course, all the missing episodes as well? Um, that would be a really rubbish situation. But, you know, at the time of recording, people seem to be taking this quite seriously. Um, we don't know, you know what the kind of internal thing with the BBC is on this. We've only got the, the kind of the claims this guy's made on his public Twitter to go off at the moment and all the speculation surrounding that and people's commentary on that. But, you know, it, it could be that it's actually something that, you know, is going to lead to an earthly child not being distributed again. It could be a load of rubbish and it might not ever come to anything at all. And in terms of, of this guy's case and whether he's got a case, again, it's all really murky kind of legally, really, because, you know, back in, in the 60s, you know, Doctor Who was not the behemoth that it has since become. Anthony Cohen was a freelance writer, you know, employed by the BBC, that there were contracts at the time. Obviously, those contracts did not cover things like those episodes being streamed 60 years later, uh, because no one ever envisaged that that would be happening. And this guy kind of says, and he makes out that the BBC have exploited his father and his legacy and stuff, and never kind of given him enough credit, enough money, whatever, for, for what he did for Doctor Who. But as I've said, you know, there were so many people involved. They were paid a fee at the time. You know, yes, things are different now in terms of the, the stream rights and everything, in terms of what Doctor Who has become. But, you know, in terms of other writers from Classic Who as well, you know, there were other writers on that first series, the second series, you know, all of 62, all of Classic Doctor Who. You know, this guy is basically just equivalent to them. And, you know, as far as we're aware, there is no kind of uh, conscious exploitation on the part of the BBC or, or anything, you know, because, like I've said, you know, no one knew the success that the Doctor Who would become back then at the time. It was all a different matter, different story, you know, it was 60 years ago, and are you really gonna get salty about something like that and stop other fans of, of Doctor Who, old and new, from being able to, you know, stream these episodes, for, from the episodes being released on, on Blu-ray or other formats in the future as well, because that's basically the proposal here. As I said, you know, we don't know how serious it is, but that's what's being put forward. Are you really going to do that? that? That sounds like a really kind of really mean-hearted and horrible thing to do. I don't want to get too much deeper into it than that, really, but but that's the gist of it. You know, hopefully that has kind of taught you something about what's happening here, what the situation is. It's a very murky thing, as I say, you know, a very complicated thing. Um, it might not actually come to anything. We don't really know what the deal is here. We know the speculation. We know the claims as to whether or not they actually have, you know, any gravitas behind them. We don't know as to whether it'll impact the BCI player thing. We don't know. Uh, we'll just have to, have to wait and see how this goes, really. But that's the background to it. That, that's what's happening. If nothing else, you know, it, I suppose it's nice for, for the first Doctor Who story to be getting this publicity, you know, in, in this anniversary year. It's nice for me to be able to do a video about it and uh, you know, hopefully, yeah, you know, people will be interested in, in this story and stuff. But it's just a really kind of a sorry situation and let's just hope that if, if there is a real case here that it's resolved quickly. Let me know your thoughts and opinions and all this stuff down in the comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new for more stuff like this in the future. We have recently passed 8k subscribers, which is really great. So thank you to everybody that has subscribed so far. If you are new, go and join that, that number. You know, let's get it to 9k or whatever. Uh, it'd be really great to have you on board. So yeah. But otherwise, until the next one, thank you so much for watching and goodbye for now.